finish, but basically uh, we're going to run some new wire up to the head unit. This is a 18 to 18 gauge two conductor. Uh, we have red and black, but we're going to use red for the right 12 volt signal. And we're going to use the black for the left uh, turn hand signal or you can do vice versa, it doesn't matter as long as you know what color you're running to what. Uh, we're going to use some T-taps, that way we're not cutting the harness. Uh, it's the cleanest and safest way. Already got it stripped here, it comes with uh, a string, pull that string out. And uh, this is just for my sake, I'm putting a little bit of heat shrink on the jacket just to Light. So now we're going to go uh, crimp this onto some uh, spade terminals and use the T-taps. Alright guys, there's a couple of different T-taps. The one we're going to be looking at is going to be this one here. Uh, basically you just bite onto the wire that you're trying to use. So if you have two wires, you need two of these. And basically right there where our spade connector is gonna slide in. And we'll show you how that's done here in a second. All right guys, the best way I've found to do this is to take your kick panels off. This is where the fuse compartment and all your wires going out to the vehicle, truck, whatever, RV, whatever you might have that you're trying to put a blind spot on. This is where it's gonna separate. Notice right here, there's some wires that come down. This is the channel, the conduit that takes you throughout the vehicle uh, or your raceway. But if you notice, there's some harnesses over here. So basically, I'm lucky because these come pre wired, these trucks come pre wired with turn signals. Um, your truck or vehicle might already come with turn signals on the tow mirrors or on the side mirrors and if that's the case you're also in luck because what you can do is follow the, the boot right here that's going to be your rubber boot taking you to the vehicle doors accessories so if you have turn signal speakers anything like that that's right through here and it comes out over here hazards or turn signal whatever you want to do you can do this with the car on or off and just unplug them and then see which one turns off your turn signals to your mirrors once you figure out or narrow it down to what connector you need then you'll get your bolt meter in this case I'm gonna go one to ground start plugging it in this isn't the connector I need you just start plugging it in one by one and seeing if you get voltage on and off on and off I guess let's go ahead and show y'all what I'm talking about so that's the volt meter set up so let's let me get set up and I'll show you what I'm talking about alright guys that's my volt meter I'm gonna turn on the hazards just to show y'all an example. I've got a little piece of wire since these leads and wire gators are way too big to stick into these little crevices. Um, you're gonna need something like 22 or 18 gauge. But uh, if you look at the meter, make sure you're going just in the one slot because you don't want to um, 
short anything out, so do them one by one, take your time, be patient. Or you can look it up on one of the forms, but I've already established which ones I need. If you notice, look at the voltmeter. Okay, now I'm gonna turn them off. And if you wanna get real specific, and this might not be on every vehicle, you might have to run a wire from each side to find out, you know, right and left. But luckily, I got right and left on the right side kick panel. So black is my right turn signal. All right guys, we have everything set up. We tapped into the harness there. You have your spade that plugs into your T-tap. So it's two pieces. Uh, one thing is give it a few spins on the T-tap so you got good clean copper. Use some strippers if you need to, but don't cut the wire. Also make your spade Make sure your spade terminal is actually sliding in. See how they're moved to the side? That's just how it is when you crimp it. Uh, I use some heat shrink, but you can actually um, just, you know, tape it up if that works for you or if that's all you got. And then get your meter and test voltage and make sure that you're actually getting a good contact. There it is. Keep moving. All right, now we're in the vehicle. So we're gonna take out the head unit. There's a couple things you're gonna need. You're gonna need a trim tool. This goes for any vehicle, unless you wanna scratch and tear up your dash. Um, I've already got a little bit of scuffing right here. That's gotta get fixed. But if you wanted to make it worse, use a flathead screwdriver that's too fat for the little insert so basically you need a trim tool you're gonna want to lay down a blanket towel sweater whatever you got you can take the shift knob out I don't have to because I can work around it I've done it so many times you're gonna need a 10 millimeter in this case but whatever you need make sure you get an extension but chances are it's gonna be a 10 millimeter or a Phillips just make sure you have an extension so you can get deep in there. I use an impact. Um, it's got an automatically uh, automatic setting to where you don't have to worry about over torquing stuff and stripping it out. But you're also going to need a zip tie. We're going to send this zip tie or fish tape, whatever you have. Send this down into the vehicle. Pull your wires up, and then we're going to terminate. And then we're down to the home stretch. Um, but yeah, as you can see, this trim tool fits in these little gaps here. Um, but that's not what we want. We want to pull this off first down here. If you need a flashlight, get a flashlight. Pull it off one by one. This trim tool is probably not strong enough for some of these. This is a small one. I've already taken this off a million times. Remove this part here. Once you've done this 10 times, it becomes very easy. Get your impact. There should be four bolts that are holding it in. One, two. When you're taking them out, take them out slowly because you don't want to drop them in there. Make sure it's on the socket. And make sure it's all the way out. Just like that, see I lost it. If you got a magnetic socket, that's even better, but this is a deep non-magnetic socket. That's what you're looking for right there, being able to pull it out by yourself. Take these bolts, set them aside. You don't want them to scratch your screen. Remove the head unit. All right, now we're gonna Feed this fish tape down here, and you're gonna wanna try to find the gap that takes you. Look at this rat's nest. This has to be all cleaned up, uh, but I left it like this knowing that I had to come back. Uh, but here we go. 
There's a lot of wires in here, guys. This has got to be like at least 200 wires. Look for your gap. I see my gap down there. I see other wires coming up from there, actually. So that tells me that I've run wires before and I can see my zip tie. So let me get that tied on, pull it up, and then we'll start terminating. All right, once you've gotten your wire pulled, make sure everything's uh, nice and neat. Nothing's in the way here. Make sure you pull your camera wire as well while you're in there. This is your camera extension wire. And it connects. This is the power in the signal right here. Zip tie. So another thing is when you're tying it on with the tape, make sure you don't tug on the zip tie because then you'll lose it. RCA. I get all the wires ran in them. But basically you're gonna be tying both left and right onto the RCA switcher here. Switch rule. This is for backup camera. See right here we got the left blinker. We're gonna cut this heat shrink off. And then we have our ground that we're gonna tie our cameras to. So you're basically giving it a signal to tell this little module, hey, the left blinker is turning on. Once this module recognizes that, it also sends a voltage out to your camera to turn on that one camera same thing with the right you know you got the uh, right voltage coming in tells the module hey the right blinkers on and then it sends voltage out to the right camera so it turns on so basically it's just a director of voltages to tell stuff when to turn and turn on and turn off uh, like a controller would with outputs um, you input your 12 volts to turn it on and then it outputs 12 volts to tell whichever output you want to come on so front rear right left whatever camera you want that's what the module is going to do all right guys as you can see our rat nest is all terminated uh, we've got the signals going out to the cameras uh, one thing that i would recommend before you Just verify that they work. Just only take a second and also verify that your blinkers work. I've tested all that. So we're gonna go ahead and plug this one in. And we're gonna plug it in with this right. You see they they're labeled. Uh, the kit comes with a coupling. So you can coupling these together. Obviously they're female to female, but they do come with which look like and make sure to use some test of tape when you're done. But they basically look like this. So you can coupling these two turn signals together. Anyways, test your cameras, test, test your signals, make sure you don't have them backwards. You want the, the input to turn on the output. Go ahead and run your cables for your cameras while you're there, and you should be good to go. We're gonna, the next step is gonna be actually installing the cameras on the mirrors. This is the scary part because you gotta do some cutting on the OEM mirrors as I am scared because they're tow meters and they're not cheap and they're the OEM ones, but if you do it right, you shouldn't have any issues. All right guys, here we got the door disassembled again. Got the head unit back in. I will recommend when you get the head unit back in before you button everything up, <clears throat> just make sure you've uh, Tested all your audio controls, your turn signals. Make sure everything's good before you close it up. Sometimes you cram everything back in there, it comes loose or 
you know, something shorts out. So you just want to, instead of having to take everything loose again, go ahead and test it while you have it unbolted. Make sure everything's good. If everything's good, bolt it back. So down here, we've taken the door, we've taken the speaker out. We've sent our zip tie through here, our fish tape. Taped it up really good. And a little trick that I like to do is moving it up, get some WD-40 on there. And that'll make it a lot easier to pull and smoother. So definitely try that out. We'll get the wire pulled, everything buttoned up, and then we'll look at the mirrors. Alright guys, this is what the camera looks like on the mirror. There's different cameras out there, so you're gonna have to pick and choose what you want. I chose this one because it has an adhesive backing, something you can thread in. It's got these infrared lights, so you're just gonna have to find what works best for you. I might be switching these out because they distort the image at night, I feel, with headlights in it. So that's what it looks like, guys. Hope y'all enjoyed the video.